Now there's something really exciting when Elementor release a new feature. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the beta version, version 2.2 of Elementor and what that brings with it, namely the new navigator. But stick around because we're gonna take a look at a couple of other things that are kind of hidden away underneath it, but they're just as useful in your WordPress and your web page development. So let's just jump into WordPress and take a look at these new features. My name is Paul C and this is WP Touch, the channel where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon below to be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so the beta version of Elementor and Elementor Pro is due to come out really soon. It's version 2.2 and it brings with it a couple of new features. The navigator plus a couple of other things. So we're going to just take a look at those in action. I'm going to give you an overview of what these offer you and how they're going to help with your WordPress website development. So let's start off with the big new addition to Elementor and that's the new navigator. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you've got the beta version installed at this point in time. Obviously, when the full version comes out, you just need to make sure you've got the updated version. If you don't have the beta version installed, it's very easy to do. All we need to do is come to the Elemental section on the left-hand side. Go to Tools. And once you go into Tools, you just simply need to come into Version Control. And in there, you can see we've got Beta Tester. Just simply come in and enable that. Once you enable that, if you go over to your plugin section, you should then find that the beta version will become available. Now, the most important caveat here is only do this on a test site. Don't do this on a live site because there are going to be bugs. There are going to be quirks and incompatibilities. And if you do it on a live site, chances are you're going to cause yourself some real headaches. So stick to doing this on a test site. Now, if you've never set up a test or development site and you don't know how to do that, especially if you want to do it offline, I'd recommend taking a look at my video. I'll put a link in the top corner and in the description below that will show you exactly how to set up local by flywheel and you can set things up to work on a WordPress site offline incredibly easily. Anyway, so that's how you set up the beta tester. That's how you enable the ability to download the beta version of Elemental and or Elemental Pro as new versions come out. So once you've done that, that's the first thing. Next thing we're going to do is going to come into our pages and we're going to take a look at the editor in action and see how we can start using the navigator. So what we're going to do is going to come down and just open up a page that I've already created. I'm going to click on edit with Elementor, let that load in. And then once we've done that, we can then go through and enable the new navigator. So there's our page, nothing unusual in there. So how do we get to the navigator? Well, it's very, very easy. There are a couple of ways of achieving it. You can come down onto the left-hand section and right at the bottom next to your settings, you'll see we now have the navigator. If you click on that, that'll open the navigator up. Or you can right-click on the page and from the right-click menu, you can see we have navigator in there. So there's two ways of doing it, very, very quick and easy. Click and open that up and you can see there's our new navigator down the right-hand side. Now, if you're unsure what the navigator does, it's incredibly easy. It's basically a list view of all the different widgets, all the different elements that make up your page. So if we take a look at this page, you can see I've got various different sections in there. It's a test page. I've used it in the past, so it's a little bit of a mess, but it's a good example. So what we can do now is we can expand any of these sections. You can see I currently have six sections in there. Now, at the moment, they're named section, which doesn't really mean anything, but we'll address that in a few moments. If we expand that out, you can see we can now see whatever is inside this. We've got a column, we've got a text editor, we've got a spacer, and we've got a media carousel. I can hide those by simply clicking on the little eye icon, and all that does is it hides it from view. If I want to, I can reorder any of these. So if I want to take this section and drop it down below, you can see I can drop it down wherever I want, and now it's positioned in the hierarchy where I've dropped it. So we can move that up and down. We can adjust those things on there. It's all incredibly simple. Next thing you need to do is take a look at how we can actually rename these just to make it a little bit more easy to figure out what we're dealing with because section means nothing. So we've got this section at the top, which we know is our hero area. So if I come out where it says section and I just simply double click on the word section, I can now rename that hero header. Now it suddenly makes a lot more sense what we're dealing with. And I can go through and I can rename any of these at any point. So that's very, very useful to deal with. Now we're not limited to doing that with just each of the sections. I can come into any of the widgets that have been used and I can rename those. I can simply double click and I can edit the title of that. So I can quickly come through, set things up, 
align it the way that I want, rename it everything so it makes a lot more sense, and then I have a much easier way of working. So that really is how simple the Navigator is to work with. It's a great way of being able to see your entire design in a simple visual format that you can rename for ease of use. Now as you can see at the moment, the Navigator can be dragged around any way we want. And you might like that, you can resize it if you want by using the resize handles at the bottom. All quite nice and simple, the kind of thing you'd expect inside your operating system. Nothing unusual there. We can, if we want to, set this up. We can expand everything out on there so we can see everything very quickly. We can also make this float to the right hand side and take the entire side of our screen. So if we just drag that over, you'll see we get this light blue bar to the right hand side. Once I let go, that'll now dock that on the right hand side of the screen. Everything will adjust accordingly, and we've now got that laid out as a permanent fixture on the right hand side. If you want to undock that, it's simply a case of reversing the option to dock it. We can simply grab the navigator, drag it away, and you can see that immediately undocks. So incredibly easy to use. If you want to close it down, we can simply click on the little X in the top right hand corner and that now closes it down. Again, if we want to bring it back, we can just right click, open the navigator or just come at the bottom and choose navigate from there. And you can see that integrated into the right hand side of our screen for us. So it's very easy to work with and hopefully what you can see is it's incredibly intuitive. We're not done there. We still have tons of functionality that we can use with the navigator. The right click option still works and we can use that inside the navigator itself. So if I wanted to duplicate a section, I can right click on the header, for example, and I could come down and say duplicate, or I've got things like edit section. So I can click on edit. You can see that'll immediately open up the editing options on the, on the left hand side. If I want to do things like copy and paste or paste my styles in or reset my styles, I can do all of that from here. I could even go through and set this as a global template. So it's incredibly intuitive to work with, but also gives us a ton of functionality that saves us rummaging around in various different places to do all these kind of good things. We can also even go through and delete sections from there as well. So let's just try a couple of these features out. Let's just say I'll duplicate my hero image. So we can click on that, right click, and we'll say duplicate. You can see that immediately gives us a perfect duplicate in there. So we can now come in if we want to and select any of the options in there. And you can see when we select it on the page itself, it all also reveals itself in the navigate on the right hand side. So we've got the media carousel. We can just hide that if we want to, or we can simply come onto it and we'll just say we want to delete that from there. We don't want that on this particular section. So we'll delete that. You can see that immediately changes everything for us. So that's very cool. Let's just say you want to take the spacer out as well. So we just delete that. So we now got a slightly different variation on our header section. So let's just say we wanted to change the style of the font on there, or we can do things like that. Let's just say we'll come over to this about section. So you've got there's the heading. We can right click. We can say copy and we can come onto this and we can say paste style and immediately it picks up the styling from there. So it's very intuitive and just should save a huge amount of time when you want to do repetitive tasks and you don't want to have to scroll up and down the page all over the place. So you can name all your sections, you can copy, duplicate, paste styles, all that kind of good stuff, all from inside the navigator. So this is something that really does enhance exactly what you can do with Elementor and Elementor Pro and should speed up your entire workflow. So there's one thing that Elementor did recently that kind of annoyed people was adjust the way the little icons worked in the editor. So one of the things they've done in this 2.2 beta version and you should have back very soon is the ability to re-enable these editing handles. Now the right click is something that you either love it or hate it, but the removal of those little handles did make a lot of people really annoyed. So I'm just going to show you quickly how you can put those back in and just update your editing workspace to make it just a little bit easier to work with. So bringing back the editing handles is very, very easy. All we need to do is come down to Elementor and we're going to choose Settings. And once we load that in, you can see we've got some options in there. So if we jump over to the Advanced section, you can see Editing Handles is an option. And by default, it's set to Hide. All we need to do is click on Show, hit Save Changes. And then we go and edit a page with Elementor. So I'll just come back in and we'll say All Pages and I'll edit a page. We'll see now that we get those editing handles back, which just should bring a lot of happy faces back for those people that found it a little annoying where those have kind of been taken away. So you can see at the top now, we have all the options like copy, add a new, delete, and so on. So pretty cool and very, very easy to add back in. Now, one of the other things that they've added into this latest update, this beta version that should be coming out soon, is the ability to auto-complete your internal links. This is something that should just speed up and avoid any kind of errors when you're linking to pages and the internal structure of your website. So let's take a quick look at how that works. 
Now another new feature that's been added to Elementor is the autocomplete URL for internal pages. This is really useful and something you might have got used to when you're working with WordPress itself, but you never had it inside Elementor. So it's very, very easy to use. Let's just simply add a new button. We're going to select the button. What we're going to do is we're going to come to the link section. We're going to start typing in something that I know has got a page. And you can see once we do that, it automatically starts to filter through anything that matches what we started typing in. And then we can simply come in, select the page, and you can see that now inserts the full URL in there for us without us having to remember exactly what that link is. So again, one of those really cool, simple little time-saving features that's going to make your life just a little bit simpler. So there we go, that's what I wanted to demonstrate today in this forthcoming version of Elementor 2.2. Some of the key new features that have been added in. What do you think of those features? Do you think it's just playing catch up with other page builders? Do you think they're gonna change the way that you develop web pages and websites? Is it just a little too late? What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments section below. Let's get our conversation started. As always, my name's been Paul C and this has been WP Tuts. Let me know what you think of this video. Did you enjoy it? Give it a thumbs up if you did, a thumbs down if you didn't. As always, hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with what goes on and hit the bell icon to be notified every time new content is added to the channel. If you've got any comments, questions and feedback on this video, please pop those in the comment section below and until next time, take care.